Hi, Tyler at Inner Fidelity here. Today we're going to talk about a really wonderful headphone. This is the Stax SR009 electrostatic headphone. This is, uh, well, if somebody asks me what the world's best headphone is, this is the headphone that I'll mention for sure. Um, and there are others, but um, the SR009 is really a stunning headphone. Um, I got a chance to hear these headphones on a number of different amplifiers at the Rocky Mountain Audio Fest this year, and I thought it would be fun to uh, do a round of listening tests with the 009 and uh, some really good amplifiers for it. Stax makes a couple of amplifiers, but the really great amps for this headphone are very expensive and made by other companies. Um, in fact, some would argue that the world's best headphone amplifier for these headphones is actually a do-it-yourself headphone amplifier called the T2 that was designed by Kevin Gilmore. <clears throat> um, at any rate, I did do a bunch of listening this last week, and um, I want to invite you to go read the article on Inner Fidelity. The link is below the YouTube video here. Um, because I'm really not going to have time in the video to go through all the listening tests and my impressions in any way, but just a, a very brief cursory look. Um, but I thought I'd let you see these really incredible headphones. Um, it's probably worth uh, on the video here to talk some about the money. Um, there's pretty close to $50,000 worth of headphone gear in this setup. Um, the 009 is about a $5,000 headphone, and um, I'll put it away for the moment. Um, I was really glad to call John Iverson at Stereophile to get his recommendation on a DAC to use for this test, and he turned me on to the Air Acoustics QB9. This is a USB only DAC. It's really a fine piece of gear. Uh, it's $2,500, which is quite uh, inexpensive given the cost of the amplifiers in this test. Um, played it from my MacBook and it really sounds spectacular. I also had to run the cable quite a distance around the room here as you'll see in a moment. And uh, Cardis uh, was nice enough to send me some three meter lengths of their balanced and unbalanced Cardis clear cables. Uh, each of which cost near $4,000 a run. So the cables alone are four grand um, for each set. Um, and they were spectacularly transparent as far as I could tell um, for the test. So they did a great job. So I'm gonna pick up the camera and uh, show you around the various amplifiers. <coughs> And these are the two Stax amplifiers. This is the SRM007T Mark II. Now, this is a tube amplifier, and um, it sounded very sweet, although it wasn't able to drive the headphones to a very high level. And this is about a $2,400 uh, amplifier. And the one uh, next to it is the Stax SRM727 Mark II. Um, this is the one amplifier that I thought actually did pretty poorly on this test. Um, really didn't seem to have the poop and, and uh, was fairly rolled off um, and murky um, for the headphones. And with a headphone that is as capable as the um, uh, 009, it's pretty sad to roll off the details. Uh, this next amp is a, um, a solid state amplifier. And this is the Cavalli uh, Audio Liquid Lightning. This is a, a MOSFET uh, power device um, amplifier. Uh, this won't will be unavailable until about April of 2013, and um, uh, we'll have a substantially different chassis. It'll look quite different when it becomes available again but it has a very similar uh, um, electronics. There, there won't be very many changes in the electronics. Um, this amp was uh, warm and 
sort of expansive sounding, um, kind of dramatic, uh, I would say. Um, a very nice piece of gear, and it will go for about $5,000. <clears> the the next amp is the uh, Head Amp Blue Hawaii Special Edition. This amp was also designed by Kevin Gilmore. Um, it is a uh, tube output uh, divide, uh, amplifier, um, but it has uh, FET inputs and has some constant current sources, a solid state power supply. Um, quite a uh, complex design, actually, and uh, the result was um, brilliantly neutral. Very clean, very controlled sounding, really heard nothing but the music with this amplifier. Um, in the end, it was probably my personal favorite, although they all had some intriguing characteristics to them. But um, for me personally, I, I, I found this amp um, very, very neutral and controlled and much to my liking. Um, you get past the where the computer and the uh, air DAC was, and on this side, um, well, I have a little Woo Audio uh, WA3 um, hooked up to my Sennheiser HD800s here just to have a little uh, comparison going on. And I, I have to admit that um, I, I really like this little amplifier. It's very lush and lovely and uh, sounds good on my 800s. And uh, if you can't afford $10,000 for a, one of these amplifiers in a Stax amp, um, you're, 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 you're getting that last 10% um, for sure, but it is costing you a lot of money. And uh, small setups like this can be um, very good sounding as well. Um, the, uh, this is the Ray Samuels A10 Thunderbolt. This is a, not only a, a headphone amplifier, but it's also a um, pre-amplifier. It has, it's a fully functioning uh, preamp. could be used as the entire uh, center of your home stereo system. This is about, uh, I think it's around $6,000, but um, this is uh, uh, a, a beautiful looking piece of gear. Very, very uh, fully functioned. Um, a single, uh, single-ended input, two unbalanced or two balanced inputs, uh, a, a balanced and an unbalanced tape out, and a balanced and an unbalanced preamp out. Um, this amp was uh, a sort of a sparkly sounding, very lively sounding amplifier, and uh, uh, I didn't test it as a preamp. Unfortunately, didn't have the time to do that, but. And then lastly, and certainly not leastly, is the Woo Audio WES uh, electrostatic uh, headphone amp. This is a, a all-tube headphone amplifier. It has a very lush and inviting sound. Um, also goes for uh, in the neighborhood of $5,000 and has a number of upgrades, tube upgrades you can get for it and cap capacitor upgrades. Uh, can bring the final price closer to seven thousand dollars, but um, it's a uh, a very lush and tuby sounding piece of gear. Um, as I said, uh, I, I really can't go into it too much more than that. Um, but if you'd like to learn a little more about uh, this fifty thousand dollars worth of gear and my experience with it over the past week, um, go to Inner Fidelity on the link below the video. And uh, you can have a look. And we'll see you next time, which is likely going to be at the Consumer Electronics Show at the beginning of January. All right. Thanks a lot. And we'll see you next time.